the morning of your life is the best time to build a fortress for your success. success. And soar just like the eagle. Soar like the eagle. Join us today for insights, insight. anointing, anointing. Secrets. secrets, and the word and the word. that will awaken the giant in you and make you a place better. It's time to pick the best and be the best. Be the, very best. the Eagle Hour with your host, Dr. D.K. Onukoya. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Onukoya. You are most warmly welcome to this Eagle Hour. A program for those who want to fulfill their destiny. A program for those who have rugged determination to beat the best and be the best. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your hand of power and strength. Father, we thank you because you are the glorious one. You are higher than the highest, you are taller than the tallest. Give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, let your anointing and power be upon your children in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands upon your children for mighty, wonderful, and glorious things in the name of Jesus. Move your children from strength to strength and from glory to glory in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 We continue on our series, Every Youth a Bible Student. Why should I read the Bible? Why should I read the Bible? You read the Bible, number one, to know more about God. Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open thou my eyes, that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. You read the Bible to know more about God. Two, you read the Bible to grow spiritually. As you read the Bible, the Word of God makes you to grow spiritually. Three, you read the Bible because God speaks through His Word. And so you can hear the Word of God. Four, you read the Bible for instructions in righteousness. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. The Bible is given by inspiration of God, is profitable, one, for doctrine, two, for reproof, three, for correction, and four, for instruction in righteousness. Number five, you read the Bible to know the mind of God. Number six, you read the Bible for spiritual maturity. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere make of the word, that you may grow thereby. Number seven, you read the Bible to increase your faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Number 8, you read the Bible to serve as a mirror for your life. As a mirror for your life. In Psalm 119 verse 105. You can cross check all these scriptures after the teaching. Number 9, you read the Bible to be able to say in the face of the enemy, it is written. Like you read in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Number 10, you read the Bible for divine information. Divine information. Psalm 119 verse 130. Say, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Number 11, you read the Bible to be taught by God, to become a student in the school of God. Exodus 24, 12. 12, you read the Bible to know the statutes, commandments of God. Leviticus 18, chapter 5 and 1. 13, you read the Bible to renew your mind. According to Romans 
chapter 12 verse 2 14 you read the bible for perfection of your growth and of your stand in the lord 15 you read the bible for wisdom in deuteronomy chapter 14 from verse 5 to 6 16 you read the bible for understanding deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5 to 6 17 you read the bible for correction second timothy 3 16 18 you read the bible to stand against the devil matthew chapter 18 verse 18 19 you read the bible to know your right as a believer to know your right as a believer in luke chapter 10 verse 19 20 you read the bible to know about the eternal life john 3:39 21 you read the bible for divine guidance in Psalm 73 verse 24 22 you read the Bible because it is the sword of the spirit 23 you read the Bible to become God's oracles 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 11 24 you read the Bible to grow into sonship Romans 8:19. 25 you read the Bible to attain divine standard 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15 to 16 you read the Bible for divine do's and don'ts. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. You read the Bible to be on fire for God. In Acts of Apostles chapter 4 from verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, not teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, your ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The Bible is so important that we have names of the Bible. The Bible is called the Book of the Law, Joshua 1 8. The Bible is called the Word of Life, Philippians 2 16. The Bible is called the Word of God, Mark 7 13. The Bible is called the Lively Oracles. Acts 7.38 The Bible is called the Word of Faith Romans 10.8 The Bible is called the Sword of the Spirit Ephesians 6.17 The Bible is called the Scripture of Truth Daniel 10.21 The Bible is called the Word of Truth 2 Timothy 2.15 The Bible is called the Engrafted Word James 1.21 do you study the Bible? Can engage in character study. This is studying and learning from the Bible characters, strength and weaknesses. For example, you can decide to learn about Moses, his birth, his spiritual exploits, his experience, and learn from what happened to him. You can do a topical study. This is studying the Bible by picking a topic, e.g., prayer, e.g., holiness, then going through the Bible to see what God has to say about it. You can study the Bible by random study. This is done by picking any portion of the Bible and then reading and meditating upon it until you get to understand it. You can read the Bible using the devotional method. This is done by reading and meditating on the particular scripture of the Bible until the Holy Spirit ministers to you. You can read the Bible using the inquiry method. This is the act of being inquisitive and searching for reasons as to why certain things happen. You can do an A to Z method of Bible reading or Bible study. This is the diligent and systematic reading of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You can do a verse by verse study. In this one, you examine each verse of the Bible and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you because every verse contains divine information. You can do a word study. This is finding the original definition, occurrences, and uses of a particular word in the Bible. These are methods you can use to study your Bible. But beloved, I need to tell you as well, there are wrong reasons for reading the Bible. 
when you want to teach and not to learn is the wrong reason for reading the Bible. When you just want to compete with others, it's the wrong reasons for reading the Bible. When you want to use it to argue or to debate, it's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. You want to read the Bible in order to condemn or to judge, it's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. You want to read the Bible to exhibit your scriptural knowledge, it's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. You want to practice just religious reading, it's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. You want to read to just while away time. It's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. You want to read the Bible to satisfy people. It's the wrong reason for reading the Bible. So don't read the Bible for the wrong reasons. Some people complain, Pastor, I read. But I don't understand. Why don't I understand? There are many reasons why you cannot understand the scripture. The major reason is reading without the Holy Ghost. If you do it without the help of the Holy Spirit, you will not understand it. Reading with divided attention, reading with unforgiveness, with inconsistency, reading with uncircumcised heart, reading the Bible with lustful eyes, reading the Bible with backsliding spirit. Foundational problems too can keep you from understanding scripture. Starting to read the Bible without prayer can keep you from understanding scripture. Unconfessed sins can keep you from understanding scripture. Rebellious spirit can keep you from understanding scripture. Over familiarity with God can keep you from understanding scripture. Pride can keep you from understanding scripture. Lies can keep you from understanding scripture. What do you stand to gain by studying the word of God? Bible says study to show thyself approved. What do you stand to gain? Number one, good success. Good success. In Joshua 1 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. But then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Do you want success? Be a student of the Bible. Two, good spiritual defense. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Number three, you read the Bible for spiritual growth. Colossians 2, verse 6 to 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. 4. You read the Bible for divine revelation. Divine revelations. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. But divine revelations. Five. You read the Bible for fresh oil. Job chapter 29, verse 6. When I wash myself with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. Six. You read the Bible to gain a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Seven, you read the Bible for heavenly wisdom, to gain heavenly wisdom. I'm telling you all this so you can know why it is essential that you become a Bible student. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Number eight, you read the Bible to gain divine immunity or protection. In Psalm 91 verse 7, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, which shall not come nigh thee, for divine immunity and protection. Nine, you read the Bible so that your inner man is fed. Without 
that the word of God in you, your inner man will be underfed or will starve to death. Turn, you read the Bible to avail yourself with the promises in the Bible. Look at Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. There are lots of promises in the Bible. Remember, you know the former things, and that consider the things of old. Be old, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God will do new things as you engage in study of His Word. Number 11, you read the Bible to obtain deliverance. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, you read the Bible to obtain deliverance. Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And in Obadiah 117, but upon of Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Twelve, you read the Bible to obtain healing. Isaiah 53, from verse 3 to 5. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we eat as it were our faces from him. He was despised and was seen with not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You read the Bible to obtain healing. 13. You read the Bible for restoration. You read the Bible for restoration. In Joel chapter 2, from verse 24 to 27. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, that are there wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. That I am the Lord your God, and none else, my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. You read the Bible for restoration. Finally, you use the Bible to nourish your soul. Because the Bible is the food to nourish your soul. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere make of the world that he may grow thereby. You read the Bible to nourish your soul. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Has this to say, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So the Bible is milk for babies, and bread for the hungry. You read the Bible to nourish your soul. Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 11. Very interesting scripture. Of whom we have many things to say and have to be uttered, still ye are dull of your life. But when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses that milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. But it's a big. For strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews 5. 11 to 14. The word of God, the Bible, is meat for God's people. In Psalm 19, verse 10, he says this More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, 
sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. It is honey for dessert, honey to help you to grow, honey as nourishment for your soul. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In case you are listening to me and you are not born again, you need to surrender your life to Jesus by saying what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you like Jesus. Come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You said that short prayer with me. I congratulate you. Thank you for surrendering your life to Jesus in this program. The Lord will continue to uphold you and follow all our instructions. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this program. As they pray these prayers, give them uncommon breakthroughs. Give them uncommon testimonies. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is time to pray now. Say, my Father, my Father, my Father. Open my understanding in the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father, my Father. Open my understanding in the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father, my Father. Open my understanding in the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father, my Father. Open my understanding in the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father, my Father. Open my understanding in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, so, oh God, arise. And let every enemy of the word of God in my life be scattered. In the name of Jesus, oh God arise. Let every enemy of the word of God in my life be scattered. In the name of Jesus, continue to pray it, continue to say so. That every enemy of the word of God in your life must be scattered. In the name of Jesus, that every enemy of the word of God in your life must be scattered. In the name of Jesus, that every enemy of the word of God in your life must be scattered. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Every power stealing the word of God in my heart die in the name of Jesus. Every power stealing the word of God in my heart die in the name of Jesus. Yes, command the power stealing the word of God to die in the name of Jesus. Command that power stealing the words of God in your heart to die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, oh God, arise. Make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. Oh God, arise and make me a Bible addict in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. So every power assigned to pull down my spiritual life. Die in the name of Jesus. So every power assigned to pull down my spiritual life. Die in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray it. Every power assigned to pull down your spiritual life. Command that power to die in the name of Jesus. Command the power to die. Command the power to die. Command the power to die in the name of Jesus. Command the power to die in the name of Jesus. Command the power to die in the name of Jesus. Command the power to die in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Jesus. Then thank you for joining this program. We'll see you again next time. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us share the grace of fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, witness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.